Thanks. You are host. Okay. Great. I'll keep an eye on. It should be all you need from me. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. Good one. Okay, everybody. Um, welcome to our meeting. Doesn't look like we have any public at the moment. Um, so, of course, you saw my note about Stephanie, so let's keep her in our thoughts and her family. Um, of course, I think we should also take a moment just to keep all of our, all the Black members of our community and our nation in our thoughts as we're going through this um, moment in time, which hopefully will spur a lot of meaningful change. Um, so given sort of the fact that I bet, I bet most of us have been sort of, at least I know I have been kind of absorbed with all of the news and everything that's been going on. I don't know, just give anybody who wants to speak or have anything to say a moment to do so before we get officially started. Thank you, Laura, for just giving us a moment to acknowledge the very traumatic times we're in. Yeah, and I think um, we have a timely discussion to have today that we'll, we'll, we'll roll in some of that. Um, and I haven't read it yet, but I just saw there was a New York Times post about sort of environmentalism and and racism and um, maybe we can share that together. Uh, there's lots of stuff written about this, of course, um, that we have talked about in our meetings, but you know, need to continue to keep at the forefront of our, of our work. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen here. In terms of the agenda, um, I don't believe we received the notes from our meeting last week. So we will just hold on to that agenda item and we can review the notes from last week, last time's meeting next time. Um, but because we have unfortunately lost our, our official note taker, um, we will need to go back to the time when we had to take our own notes. <laughs> um, and for Sarah's um, knowledge, but really for all of us to kind of be mindful of, I don't know why this isn't opening, let's see. Just give me one second. We did get the document. Okay, great. Email. Um, so, so this is just sort of an overview of what we have to include in our minutes based on what's included in the guide. Um, so I thought maybe what we'd do um, is just try to go in alphabetical order with who's here. If someone's not here, we'll skip them and they'll be on the docket for next time. Um, does that sound okay with everybody? Like thumbs up? Yeah, I don't see why not. <laughs> uh, so um, that would mean that maybe Dwayne you're going by last name, huh? If I'm, yes. <laughs> you, I'm doing it right. Win. I'm also bad at the alphabet, so <laughs> I'll have to make sure you <laughs> keep me on my toes. 
Uh, so Dwayne, if you're willing and able to take minutes for today's meeting. Yep. Perfect. Um, yep. Uh, yep. I'll get that started. And then Sarah and Darcy, you guys are going to, it's going to be Darcy next. Third letter. Right. Um, okay. So Dwayne, do you have any questions about this? I mean, the basics are that we've convened who's here. Yep. And, um, and any votes we take and so forth. Yep. Yep. And sort of high level issues that we discuss. Yep. Yep. Um, and if you want to summarize the conversation, some folks like to do that. Some folks don't, um, you know, just making a note if you're capturing people's comments that you probably won't be able to capture everyone's comments. So um, making a note that that's, um, that may not be the full conversation, I think is yeah. helpful when we look back. And then you can just submit them to Stephanie. I think after this meeting, maybe submit them to me and I'll see how Stephanie's doing and we can decide what to do with that. Great. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna basically just open up last meet, set of minutes and just use that as a template. Great. Um, just in terms of the form, okay. Okay, so um, next item on the, unless, does anybody have any comments or thoughts on that? I know you just received it. So if you have any edits or thoughts, please feel free to send them over email and then we can edit the document, discuss again, but hopefully it's pretty straightforward. So we um, don't have any staff updates with Stephanie gone, but um, we'll turn it over to ECAC member updates or Darcy, if you wanted to share any relevant updates from town council work. Uh, no, I don't have any updates other than um, that I had said I was going to bring back the, the the framework timeline with a few little edits on it. And um, I don't have that today. It's not time sensitive. So um, I will get that to the group sometime in the near future. You know, since our timeline goes over the next year, I think we have time to deal with it. Okay, great. Um, Andra, did you want to speak to our call from this week or last week? Yes. So Laura and I were on a call with the um, Rocky Mountain Institute people who are running the building acceleration, building electrification accelerator program. And it's a um, kind of a hybrid program of um, some municipalities are sending a team of people sort of uh, more officially selected and some municipalities are being represented by residents who are interested in making such changes. Um, so uh, we were thinking that it, it might be a good idea to have someone from ECAC on a team and, and have the um, impetus come from residents because initially it's not quite clear how relevant it will be, but we think it, there will be some very useful information. They're focusing a lot on um, the process of how you would get a town meeting or a town council, um, city council to, and mayor, you know, to approve um, uh, ordinance. Um, their goal is to have a lot of the municipalities who uh, participate end up with an ordinance or a bylaw that um, would require new buildings to be electrified. Our interests might be a little different, but I still think we could learn from them. And Stephanie and I talked today and, and she indicated that she would be very interested in um, at least going to their first meeting and being um, 
you know, seeing what it's about, um, but perhaps not doing it in any official capacity. So um, just wanted to see if there's anybody, it, well, Laura, did you wanna add anything? No, I, I think that covers it. Um, I think we both, as Andre said, both came out of the meeting feeling like this could have a ton of potential. Um, it does seem like it's, it's a time commitment, um, but there's also no real, if, if we join and it ends up not being beneficial, then I think we drop out. Um, so, um, but it does seem like maybe something that one ECAC member or Stephanie would do maybe with some other mem eager members of our community, potentially members of our task groups. Um, but given the timing, I think under the kickoff meeting was at the end of June, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, potentially just Stephanie maybe, or Stephanie, if anyone in the group feels um, kind of called to this work, wants to join that kickoff, then if it seems like based on that, it would be a useful uh, thing for us to do, then maybe we can get some task group member community members to join in. Um, I think we talked about, you know, clearly electrification is going to need to be a goal, a part of our portfolio of solutions. And I think the question is just, is the information this group going to give us going to really be helpful to us to move that forward? They're going to be focusing a lot on um, the kind of thing that um, Berkeley and Brookline have done, you know, which is to ban uh, new gas hookups. And our interests overlap somewhat because we haven't officially said we don't want the moratorium to end, but um, we like it, we're gonna keep it. But we also have oil and, you know, developments putting in propane, as well as, you know, being motivated to do electric development. So. Yeah, Our ultimate goal is, is state level action, of course, or even larger than that. Um, and I think that we're the only town that they're talking to that's more rural, at least that's the impression I got. So we may be able to bring something to that conversation that would be really beneficial from the state level work. Um, so there's, there's lots of reasons why I think we should at least check it out, um, which it sounds like if Stephanie's willing to do, that's great. And if someone else wants to join. Yeah, Darcy. And is it, uh, you might have already said this, is it targeting all residential, commercial, the whole gamut, municipal, everything? I, I think actually it may be focusing more on um, private, but, but hmm. we, don't, we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. and, I, and they're going to really develop it around the needs of the communities that are part of it sounds like so is anyone interested in being a part of that team or initially even yeah i i could be interested in that i was sort of holding back to see if anybody from the building committee subcommittee wanted to take a first job but uh, i'd be willing to check it out i i think we could also uh, announce it at our first task group meeting and see if there's anyone in our group who wants to join you. Um. It is, I think they said the time commitment could amount to two hours a week. And it may not mean every member of the team municipal team would have to put that time in, but I guess there's work in between the major meetings. Does anybody have any more uh, a website or uh, written information about this and the goals that we could read before committing? Um, I could talk with you more about it and, and send you, there's a flyer. That's okay. It. So far, I think that pretty much all there is. They may send out some information prior to the first meeting that 
yeah, share the flyer with us and um, that'd be at least a good first step. Okay. Okay, I think that um, that's helpful. So Steve, we'll kind of rope you in a bit and at least maybe just to attend the kickoff and see. Um, and then Jesse, I think that's a good point, you know, and we'll see how things align potentially if we've done the kickoff first and we feel like it's a good fit, you know, we can really try to recruit people to join from the task group. If it doesn't seem like a good fit, then we can just move on. Yeah, Darcy. Um, I just have a question because I find it interesting that the group is, um, is focused on building electrification as opposed to, you know, being net zero. Um, you know, we, we have a bunch of developments in Amherst that are, that are now electrified with heat pumps, um, but they're not, they're not, uh, you know, equipped with solar or anything like that. So I just asked about the new development down on one university drive that um, Barry Roberts development and um, it, it um, is going to be all heat pumps and the heat pumps are going to be on the roof. Uh, I mean the uh, whatever the, the parts of them that need to be outside are going to be on the roof and so they're not planning on being solar ready to why they're just focusing on location rather than both people of being net zero. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I don't, Andre, I don't know if you remember specifically, um, this is one of their man, like one of their mandates from their funders is the goal of increasing reducing delivered fuels and ga natural gas. So right. yeah. so they may be coming at it from that angle and, instead. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it'll be in conflict. They're going to be responsive. Cool. OK, great. So um, next up on the list here is review and approval of finer, final draft stakeholder list. But I want to suggest maybe we start first with um, the engagement discussion, because I think that feeds, that's going to inform some of our stakeholder list. Is that OK with you, Gazikaya and Ashwin? OK, great. Um, so I will turn the floor over to you. Is there anything you want me to share or perhaps you can also share if you'd like to? Yeah, I can go ahead and share my screen. Okay, um, so I just wanted, I know we had a little check-in um, at the beginning, but I was wondering if we could just have a moment of silence um, and just keep in our um, thoughts, uh, the loss of George Floyd, of his family and all the families who have been affected um, by this for so long and who are out in the streets or um, behind bars right now. So I'm just gonna take a brief moment. Um, so in keeping with the committee's charge, um, part 6C, which says uh, engagement of the public and relevant stakeholders in education, planning, goal setting, and development of climate actions with attention to inclusion of underrepresented groups and environmental justice communities, including but not limited to holding an annual public forum focused on climate action and the work of the EC and AC. Um, Ashwin and I have uh, just come together to share some thoughts on community participation. Um, and I wanted to start with this chart. It's from the Urban Sustainability Directors Network case studies of the climate justice work that was completed in Portland, Providence, uh, Seattle, and DC. Portland, um, the one on the West Coast. Uh, this uh, chart shows the impact of, I don't know if 
I don't know how to make it bigger here, um, but can, is this an okay view? Can you all see it? I, I cannot see it. Okay. Oh, well. Okay, you can zoom in if you go up to the top left where you see the 100%. Yeah, yes. you can go up to a higher zoom. There we go. How's that look? Mm -hmm. So it shows us the impact of our stance toward the community and it um, starts over here at, um, at a, a stance of ignoring um, and then it, it moves all the way over to deferring to. Um, and I just want to take a few minutes uh, for us to look at the chart together um, and in, I will scroll up um, so that we can see the next pieces here um, and just give you a little time to take a look at it. We, we have those that stance at the beginning and then there's um, a line for how that actually is experienced as an impact. Um, some of the goals that reflect um, these stances. And then moving down to what the message ends up being. And then it lists some of the activities that are most typically involved with these stances and some of the budgets. or budget breakdowns. So I'll continue to just um, move through this and I'm wondering if anyone notices something or wants to reflect on pieces that you might feel resonate with work that we've done thus far in the community, um, not just specifically to our work with ECAC, but um, how you've experienced um, other community participation efforts, and anyone can go ahead and share. Darcy? I guess I, I find this really, really exciting that you, that you found this somewhere <laughs> because I've been, I've been thinking about it a lot as, as a town counselor and, you know, the fact that it's, it's kind of, um, you know, with this MVP process, actually, the MVP process has the potential of being really deep outreach, um, but the 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 um, the organizational part, the ga the data gathering part, is actually the easy part. Um, although you have to find the right community members to 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 represent a, a broad swath of the community. The harder part is then taking the data and somehow meaningfully um, incorporating it or uh, you know, keeping the, those people in the position of having a voice in decision making. So that is the hard part. Um, and um, I just like the fact that we're, <laughs> we're even talking about it because normally it, it isn't talked about. Normally it's just data collection and then um, it's sort of like an empty exercise and then people say that they've done outreach. <laughs> That's what I've seen. Thanks, Darcy. Anyone else wanna share or reflect? Could, could you scroll down to the 
the lowest um, mm -hmm. horizontal bar quick. I just, I didn't finish reading that thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guess I, I think that lower right quadrant, that's really exciting too. I mean, just hearing, I mean, I agree. This is a really exciting, this gels a lot of concepts, right? But particularly that, you know, if the result is like this deep economic environmental lift, then that's, I'd love to hold everything we, want to do to that lower right <laughs> square there. Anyone else or um, have me shift it? I think that there will be time, you know, this is a jumping off point. So there'll be time to really digest this more and um, talk about it more. I, I was really thrilled to find this as well, because when you have something that's so visual and so clear um, and where you can really line up, okay, what are we doing and how does, how does that match up with what message we're sending and, and what result we may get, um, it can be incredibly helpful. Um, and, you know, what typically is done in most towns and organizations falls really somewhere in this uh, two right. and three, providing um, information and gathering input, you know, and, and these messages here, we will keep you informed, we care what you think, those sound okay, those sit sort of in my gut more easily but when you come up and, and look at the impact words here of placation and tokenization, that hits really differently. Um, and so to sort of look at where, where sort of um, what's considered acceptable or even generous um, and see that it's, it's, it's really not actually where we wanna be um, and look at possibilities of um, what could be um, and, and, and trying to position ourselves to move far this line um, can be really exciting. So um, yeah, I hope that we can continue to uh, digest this information and uh, we can send out the, the case studies that went along with this. Um, they were really pretty extraordinary. Um, Guys, you got a nice question? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and maybe this is something that comes later, you know, once we get farther along in our process. Um, but something that I wonder, question I have is like for number three, four, and five here, are there situations, sometimes I feel like there, there may be a situation where the community wants to delegate, like they want the government, like we don't want to put everything on the community members, right? It's driving to take, make the, the government or take action. And so I was just wondering if there's- Not overburdening the community. Yeah, situations where you know, the community has ownership and decided they want to make sure they have a voice, but they want this branch of government or this person to do the action and we will hold them accountable. I think that the defer to doesn't necessarily mean the community does all the work. Mm -hmm. I think it means more like, like you see here, the foster democratic participation and equity by placing full decision-making in the hands of the community, um, but it, it doesn't say placing full responsibility for action um, in the hands of the community. So it's not that the community has to get out there and hammer everything out, but that when a decision is going to be made, the community is um, having the ability to really understand what they're being asked and then to respond with a 
yes, no, this, this is what is good for our community. We need more time. We need more information or no, this, you know, this is not work. Um, Ashwin, do you have thoughts on that question? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can jump in there to try, try to address that too. So Laura, I think your point is really well taken that there is a certain reading of the defer to column that almost amounts to the government abdicating its responsibilities to do what it's supposed to do. Um, and that's obviously not what we want. And that's not the reading that I would obviously encourage us to have of that column. And I think part of the way that you get around that is by really focusing on that bottom right cell where you actually resource the process and fund the participation of community members and leaders in key moments of the decision process. So what that means is rather than creating, you, know, you also wanna think about the barriers to participation, right? Rather than having a meeting uh, that's in the center of town during the day, you bring pizza to the public housing development and have and, and pay two young people that live in the unit to facilitate it with you, right? So that, that's where that bottom right cell is absolutely essential. And I would argue that none of this works without that kind of staffing and community resource to fund leaders to do this work. That's helpful, thanks. Thanks, Ashwin. So that leads um, pretty perfectly into, um, you know, due to a national and local history of exclusion, many Amherst town residents have been discouraged from participating um, in ways that are often hidden um, to those who are planning or seeking participation. So those, those pretty hefty uh, details of has a person been compensated? Is it at a time of day where they can access it? Are, are they seeing themselves reflected in leadership that Ashwin was touching on um, are, are sometimes not at the forefront of um, our thoughts when we're seeking participation and feeling like I held a meeting. Why did nobody come? Um, so this is an effort to um, increase our awareness and understand these barriers um, and how to begin to use the understanding to repair um, the broken trust or the folks who have been discouraged from participation or who maybe have not ever known there was the option to participate um, and to seek to incorporate best practices into our interaction with the community. Um, so Ashwin's going to talk a bit about um, environmental justice uh, as a framing for this. Yeah, so I've been pretty darn distracted over the last few days between my day job and like doing organizing around uh, what's been happening in the country. But um, thank you for the introduction to this stuff, Gazit Kaya. Um, I was going to speak about environmental justice, which has an important history that's relevant to this work. And I think it's important to think kind of specifically about as we move forward with this and try to operationalize some of these principles for the specific stuff that we are trying to work on with the community and with community leaders. Um, and I know that people on this committee have different levels of background thinking about environmental justice. I know that the term at least is not unfamiliar to anybody. Um, you know, the environmental justice movement emerged in the late 70s and early 80s uh, as black leaders explicitly started to organize around the unequal impacts of environmental pollution on black communities. Um, we're talking places like Warren County, North Carolina, where famously um, and kind of monumentally, uh, the black community responded to the siting of a hazardous waste facility there and began to kick off a movement that was known as environmental justice, which for the first time knitted together issues around civil rights and environmentalism. Um, and this was really huge and it led to policy changes uh, at the EPA, it's in, at the state level and at the local level in different parts of the country. Um, and without going, there's a lot that, there's a lot of resources I could recommend to learn about that history if you're interested in. But I think crucially, what we saw in the next 20 years was a global climate justice movement that really started to innovatively link issues around racism, uh, white supremacy, inequality, uh, structural disinvestment from marginalized communities to international climate change and really sought to connect uh, racism, economic inequality, and climate change mitigation through international collaboration. Um, and one cool thing is that we're seeing a lot of that stuff that started again in the US 
moved internationally, uh, start to really land in the United States right now in the form of talks about the Green New Deal. Uh, and right now here in Massachusetts, an emerging call for a green stimulus in response to COVID. Um, and this type of uh, policy platform and proposal really focuses on making uh, in the green stimulus language, for example, I'm happy to share this uh, soon, it's in, a, in the form of a letter that's gonna be going to the governor pretty soon, uh, making health a top priority for all people with no exceptions, providing economic relief at the state level uh, directly to the people, to rescue workers and communities rather than corporate executives, and to make a quote down payment on a regenerative economy while preventing future crises and protecting our democratic processes along the way. Uh, a lot of black leadership uh, in Massachusetts is working on this. Um, and there's actually a sunrise movement event on how the climate movement can show up for black lives tomorrow uh, that I have the link to and I can send that around. I, I shared it with uh, maybe not all of you. I think I might've actually emailed it to Stephanie so it makes sense that it didn't go out, but I'll share that uh, I guess with all of you after this too because I think it would be great for us to participate in that if we can. Um, but so anyway, in this context, as we move into conversations with community leaders about these issues, I think it's really important to explicitly surface connections between material issues that affect people and what has traditionally been seen as kind of the purview of environmentalists. So this includes things like housing, paying your rent, your relationship with your landlord, being able to access state programs for solar panels, energy efficiency upgrades, et cetera, that kind of come out of those conversations, paying you your, your utility bill. Uh, finding and accessing healthy food and affordable transit. Stuff that people deal with on a daily basis. And I think that our job is to understand these connections, have conversations with community leaders that are about these types of daily material issues. And then our task is to connect them to climate policy and to the town's approach to dealing with climate change. That's, I think, where a big part of our job comes in and to approach these conversations in an open way that allows for those daily issues to rise to the top, I think will be really important. Finally, I just wanna make an explicit check about the relationship between policing and climate change. There's a strong one. Uh, you've heard a lot of talk in the media in the last week about looting, but I wanna emphasize and be clear that the police in this country are the real looters. Many municipalities have up to 50% of their budgets going towards police. Here in Amherst, police and other public safety get 18% of the budget up from 14% eight years ago. Meanwhile, community service budgets for health, senior citizens, and other matters have been stagnant at about 2% of the budget. We need to defund the police across the country and take the money that they are stealing from communities to enact violence on black and brown people to build a world that is resilient to climate. We should put this on the table with community leaders as something that we can actually talk about. I know that there's certain people, um, you know, uh, on the council and in the staff of the municipality too, that would be quick to point out that certain budgets come from certain processes and are attached to certain strings and, are, and, and certain uh, types of commitments and it's very difficult uh, procedurally to switch them up. And I would just like to emphasize that um, right now, it's absolutely vital that we not let those types of barriers get in the way of what's happening because our country is on fire and we're in a moment of rebellion and people are demanding a real reallocation of resources. So with that, I really look forward to the conversation we're about to have about to how, how to really put some of these issues, uh, bring these issues to life in our strategies and words that we're gonna bring to community leaders and partners. Thank you. Thank you, Ashwin, so much. Does anyone wanna say anything before I move to the next section? All right, I'm just gonna share um, Next piece. So as Ashwin said, we have an opportunity um, to, to really look at the way that we're interacting and start really with uh, how we talk, how we show up and how we carry ourselves from the invitation um, all the way through any part of the process. Um, and that uh, taking the time to intentionally acknowledge that um, we're not just here to talk about um, things that for many community leaders are going to feel really disconnected from their daily lives, but we're here to um, really see how all of it is connected and that um, looking at the day to day of someone's life is vitally important in, um, in the work that we're doing as a town. Um, so, 
as many of you have experienced in other group settings, many groups um, make agreements or uh, group norms or agreements. Uh, and as we have um, an existing relationship with many of our community members that has been based on um, this history of exclusion, um, I really feel that having group agreements um, could be really helpful uh, in, in beginning to demonstrate that, um, that there's an intention to, to repair and um, rebuild um, these relationships. So uh, several of these group agreements reflect and acknowledge how um, cultural and personal differences can lead to miscommunications and disengagement from participation. Um, I'll go through them briefly. And again, th these are things that we'll have time to digest. Um, and then we can share questions, thoughts, or um, additions that feel important. Um, I, I've collected these from several different sources. Um, two of the main sources are uh, Created Equal, which is a, um, a curriculum on class and tips from working class activists on the website Class Matters. Um, so to the left, you'll see um, the agreement. And then there's a, a quote um, for most of them, um, reflecting on why this agreement could be important. And then to the right, there's um, some ideas about how to put this agreement into action so it becomes more than just words. Um, so the first one is put relationships first. Um, this leader, uh, Raul Quiñones Rosado says, whether in Puerto Rico or in the US, um, the more educated someone is, the more they tend to be educated in white culture, logical and li linear, and the more they move away from indigenous and African ways of thinking. So the models of struggle tend to be, what's the strategy, get down to the tasks with less attention to relationships and less tolerance for circular thinking. Um, so, you know, some of the ways that we can put um, this, this intention into action are to put time into relationship building activities. Many of us uh, experience in so much of our work, just this, we need to get something done, we need to get straight to work. And, um, and we often skip over the building of relationships and there are opportunities to do activities that are really not in order to get the plan written right now, um, as, as important as that is, but are, are intended to say, let's connect with you and see who you are and build a relationship with you um, first and throughout. Um, and then the other um, action idea for this one is to just continue to relate abstract comment concepts back to real life. So how would this affect you? What does this look like at your house? Um, what does this make you think about? You know, because some of these abstract concepts um, that we talk about as if they are familiar to everyone may not be something that really resonates for someone. And so to, to really draw them out and, and, and create a desire to know how it impacts them. Uh, the next one is, uh, touches on that same concept um, and it's watching your language. Um, George Lakey said, they went on and on talking in a way that was abstract, competitive, abstract, unrelated to my life experience. Um, so some ideas um, for this is, is checking your, your rate of speech. Um, I, I, I personally even um, can tend to speed up when I'm trying to sound like I know what I'm talking about. Um, and some people just have a fast rate of speech because they, they are fast thinkers and slowing down our rate of speech can be helpful for everyone, um, especially with um, just, just how much we all have on our minds right now. Um, committing to regular schedule of checking in, you know, do, does anyone have any thoughts? Anyone have any questions? Anyone have a story that this brings up? Creating um, pauses. And, um, and we could consider, you know, establishing nonverbal signal, signals that can be used um, when, when someone wants to indicate that they'd like um, us to slow down or to um, give a definition of a term. 
And also just to keep an eye on how many, um, you know, how much terminology you're using. Uh, I, for one, have to do a lot of checks for understanding with Jim and Lauren after these meetings because oftentimes half of the words um, are ones that are completely new to me. Um, and I've been reading a ton about this as much as I can. So just um, keeping an eye on how much terminology you use. Um, step up, step back. Uh, if you tend to be quiet, share more. If you tend to talk a lot, share less. Um, a, a really um, important way to participate is sometimes to create uh, pockets of silence for folks who, who, who wouldn't feel comfortable um, inserting themselves when, when there's rapid fire um, conversation. Um, and, and one of the, the actions for that is not, not so much a time limit, but a reminder to folks that they may want to pause um, and give the floor to someone else, even specifically offering to someone who you haven't heard from, hey, so-and-so, is there something you wanna share? Um, and, and allowing ourselves to leave pauses um, longer than even feels needed or comfortable um, can be really helpful. Um, keep it private, don't pry. Um, so as we're, we're opening up to uh, people's personal experiences, we want to be careful not to um, make it too much of a asking them to divulge all of their personal experiences. I find this um, thus far in my efforts to get involved with town, sometimes I want to say, I need this, and then I feel asked to share a personal story or to, to become very um, emotional and private, you know, share private things that, I, um, that actually make it more uncomfortable for me to be participating. And I think that we need to just remind ourselves that we don't need proof when somebody asks for something. When they state um, a need, you know, we don't need to ask them to tell us how difficult it's been. Um, and uh, first one here, yeah, just work against that power dynamic um, or belief that people of color or those with financial insecurity are un inherently untrustworthy or trying to work the system. I've experienced this personally a lot in the, since COVID when I've been going to get the lunches that the school provides for my kiddo, um, having, people ask me, you know, do you really need it um, when there have been extra lunches and I've offered to take them to neighbors asking, you know, how many children are in their home, just, just asking me to prove that I'm not trying to take advantage of the lunch system, which, you know, for me just makes me want to not get the lunch at all. Um, and uh, demonstrating trust by, yeah, just not asking for someone to prove it. Um, next one, listen to learn. So paying special attention to cultural differences, what people value, different ways of doing things, and um, different priorities or hierarchy of needs. Um, and really um, paying special attention to some of the ways in which what can seem like a good thing can actually create harm. Um, you know, for example, talking about the need to buy local to um, a family whose primary food source is, is canned from a food pantry, or um, there was an example in a community where the effort to ban plastic bags was going to really negatively impact families who were using plastic bags as rain boots for their kiddos. Um, here's some actions that can um, be important. Uh, you know, Taking the step to introduce yourself with or add your pronouns to your Zoom name, your name tag, your email signature, um, committing to asking lots of questions. Uh, how does participation with the government authority work or feel for you? What types of activities work for you? Uh, what type of food is best for you? What type of childcare is comfortable and needed? What are your best days and times? Is video an option for your family? Are there certain buildings in town that are more or less comfortable? Um, does this mitigation goal help or hurt? Um, so those are some ideas. Any thoughts? OK. 
Okay. So um, next, uh, Ashwin, we're going to take a look at the uh, at the stakeholders. Let me see if I can, do you want me to pull those up or? Yeah, if you, if you have it handy, I have to look for, for a second here. Um, sorry. It's coming. Cool, thanks. It's super tiny, so I'll see what I can do to This is a hard doc to share on here, but yeah, just let Does, me know. I guess everyone doesn't have this, right? It did come out in the email. Um, oh, okay, cool. From Somehow Stephanie. So just guide me, Ashwin, how you want. Right, so I think the purpose of this conversation then is to uh, hear back actually from each of the sector task groups um, to kind of talk us through as a group uh, who's on this list and what your sort of thought process was around who to, who to include. Um, and that way we can all sort of have our eyes on it and make sure that we are, uh, you know, not being redundant with each other um, and also just kind of put all of our heads together to examine the negative space um, and to make sure that we really are covering all of the different constituencies that we want to cover across the groups. Um, just because um, I think having thought about this, we want to make sure that uh, we're not missing anyone important. So yeah, Darcy. Uh, I just wanted to say that um even though I was able to, uh, Stephanie sent out a document. She said it was editable. I tried to edit it. It seemed like it was editing, but then it didn't save. So, and then oh, it said, okay. read, said read only. So my edits are not in there. Okay. Thanks for letting us know that. So when it comes to your group, uh, maybe you can just talk us through what you uh, okay. intend to have in there and then we can, um, work together to make sure that those changes are reflected. Does that sound good? Yeah, is anyone able to be, to actually edit it um, in real time here or not? I'm, I'm looking at an Excel spreadsheet rather than like a Google sheet. Uh, right. If that's... It's a Google sheet, I'm not aware of it. But that's- I believe that I ended up sharing it in Excel because people were having difficulties getting into the the Google um, spreadsheet. But I'm, I'm happy to try that again. I believe it was shared with the committee as a Google spreadsheet and people okay. were having difficulties. So I sent it along as an Excel. Well, may maybe one way to do this is, uh, Gazit Kai, if this, if this would work for you, um, and especially if other people have their documents open in front of them is as people share and as we discuss and as we kind of decide to make additions, uh, changes, et cetera, could you just keep track of them in your Excel sheet? And then absolutely that'll be sort of the master copy. Cool. Does anyone want to go first? I was in the land use group, so we could go, we could go first as kind of an example. Um, I was in that group with, uh, uh, with Steve and Jim, right? Right. Okay, cool. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to just, I'll, I'll try to just jump off here. And if I miss anything, please 
add on, but basically we tried to think about uh, the town of Amherst uh, in terms of the major land use categories. So, you know, you got forests, you've got agriculture and you've got urban areas. Um, and then we try to think of key stakeholders in each of those different areas. Um, and what you see here is a list that I think reflects that. We tried to be attentive to issues around class, for example, by having uh, worker, ag agricultural workers, perhaps through the Pioneer Valley Workers Center on this list. Uh, we tried to also think about urban trees. Uh, we tried to think about the colleges and uh, the university um, that are in uh, the town because those are major land use kind of categories that have their own purviews. Um, we also tried to think about farms and farmers. So that was kind of how we thought about this. And this is the list of, we thought about 10, about 15-ish about maybe uh, stakeholders would sort of be appropriate. And that was kind of our starting point. Um, and what you'll, you'll see in the sheet that we have specific names attached to some of the groups, but not others. Um, I don't know if Jim or Steve, you want to jump in to add anything to that. No, I think you, I think you covered it. Um, we, uh, we were pretty clear about trying to reach a number of different uh, uh, constituencies, uh, some of which were sort of obvious and and you know were played big roles. Others which played big roles but were not as obvious and certainly were not as as uh, as engaged in in town activity. Um, yeah. So I think it sort of covered covered the range. Cool. So I guess I'd be I'd be totally interested to hear if others have any feedback on this list. Just looking at it right now while we have each other here, I think that's kind of the, the purpose of this is to just get our eyes on it in real time. Darcy. Um, I had suggested to you the possibility of adding um, the climate action now food forest and um, farms group um, either Carol Horowitz or um, Lenore Glazer both of whom live in Amherst and they are um, you know so they already have the connection between climate and and carbon sequestration and stuff like that um, and I also thought of the possibility of someone from NOFA, um, Northeast Organic Farmers. Um, so I don't know if you considered that or, oh, you're adding them, good. Um, so, I think we um, did consider them and that's, that's, that's why we're having this discussion is to make sure that we get a chance. Yeah, to so yeah, that was. Can you repeat the names for Climate Action now? Yeah, they were Carol Horowitz or Lenore Glazer, are leaders of that group, and they're ex very, very active. They're, they're, you know, sponsoring a, a whole set of workshops on food, forests, and farms that's going on right now, and NOFA, Northeast Organic Farmers Association. I don't have a contact person, but Carol and Lenore would definitely be able to tell you someone. Yeah, the contact person can be uh, um, Caro Roselle, C-A-R-O-R-O-Z-E-L-L. -E I would just mention that uh, Caitlin Marquise, who you have on the list, I didn't, she was at the Ag Commission meeting the same night I went there. And so we've all, she's aware of what we're doing. So there's already a loose connection there. And she was, uh, sounded very eager to collaborate. Yeah, that's great. Caitlin is, was one of the people who was involved in MVP, the MVP work, and has been uh, part of the sort of, has participated in the conversations for a little while. She's uh, really great. The other... Hello. Quick question I have is, I know I I uh, I heard as you were coming up with the um, with the uh, group categories. I, I I guess you had the rural, the urban, and the or the forest ag and urban, and I'm curious if you if there was any designation of the kind of suburban uh, and edgy kind of land use, like park-like, the, you know, like the sort of open space in, you know, that's, uh, 
I don't know, I don't know exactly how to describe it. I think of like this sort of suburban open space, edgy stuff. I think parks and um, playgrounds and community gardens will come up from the community leaders probably. Um, I would suggest um, Bernard Brennan from Amethyst Farm. And um, we've got Cinta Jones here twice, and we think that um, her main interests right now that are relevant to us is around solar, and so they sh she should probably not be asked by three different uh, task groups. We should decide where to ask her. Yeah, why, why this group of land use? Hmm. Uh, yeah. How did you determine which, which businesses to add here? Came from the committee. Uh, uh, Cinda in land use seems like a obvious choice, but I understand she has other interests. And we could certainly one could ask her, sorry. Right, but I mean, we have a, t a lot of people in town that would be land use. I'm not, I'm not opposed to having Cinda, but um, mm -hmm. I just, I, I saw she's listed like <laughs> a lot of times on these lists. We didn't, we didn't try to filter down the list. We, I think, just tried to add all the possible names that we could think of. Um, we, and we certainly didn't look at other lists from the other subcommittees to make, to look for over asking. Um, I think that's the next step. I mean, that said, that said I think, I think Darcy's bringing up an important point. I'm, I'm actually persuaded that that is a bit of a, that, that we did take an arbitrary decision there and that we should step back and consider whether or not this is a person that represents a constituency that we want to include in this process as a priority. I would actually recommend uh, putting a placeholder that says business and going back to the drawing board on trying to figure out a way to, to get be more representative there. Um, if, if anyone has an idea about how to do that right now, that would be great. I'm to, I, I don't have I, I'm kind of I'm too uninformed to really do that. Um, I wonder if there's someone here that I think does that that does feel like they have a better sense of how to think about that. Well, I think there's Cinda wears a lot of hats, right? So she's listed actually in this group twice. But I think her hat that's most relevant to this group is that she's her family is one of the largest landowners, private landowners in Massachusetts, correct? The largest after the Commonwealth. So I think that that's true. It, yeah. yeah. So um, I think that <laughs> she should definitely be in land use. <laughs> um, okay. and potentially also in energy. Um because I think there's going to be a lot of overlap there between how our land is used and her land is used for solar, right? And that's created a lot of strife in our community before, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think she should probably, she probably doesn't need to be here representing her business. And she probably doesn't need to be in the buildings group, which is another one she's listed in. Yeah, I just say for the buildings group, um, I think if anyone, it should be Evan Jones, which is who's her brother who runs the um, the runs coals runs coals the 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 lumber yard, and and when we get to our group, I can explain why how we came to that. Cool. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, I think I think in that case, let's keep Cindy Jones as a land use stakeholder. Um, but yeah, that, I think, Laura, you're right that the business side doesn't make as much sense. So let's remove that if the rest of the, if Steve and Jim, you're in agreement about that. Yes, that, that's fine. Sorry, what do you Jason's want sorry. written there? You got it. Just, just land use for Cinda Jones. 
or land, land owner, I think is the thing to say in that, in that column. Okay, in the interest of time, I, that, that was helpful. Um, even, and, and also just to kind of put this out there so everyone's kind of looked at it and uh, we can prove that everyone has uh, spent a little, at least a minute kind of looking at each other's list. If, if other ideas come to people, uh, please let, uh, I guess me and Steve know um, and we can make adjustments. Uh, Jesse, do you want to go next for buildings? Sure, and, and Sarah, interrupt me at any moment you see fit. But we did a similar thing. We tried to come up with categories. Um, so we had our categories were schools, K through 12, housing, um, municipal, commercial, education, pedagogy, and education facilities, both of being in higher ed. Um, building ar builders, architects, building materials, which is where Evan Jones, I think, you know, kind of an interesting potential, like how do people access materials for uh, low carbon construction. And then there was a couple of people on the list whose demographic was they have consistently expressed an interest in being on this group specifically. And, and we want to really respect that and, and open our arms to them. So those were our groups and, and I'm now looking at how, so one of the challenges that we had, and I think is that we simply don't know everyone on this group, on this list. Um, and I think that was, for me, that was like just the, the challenge of n just not knowing everyone. But I think as I see the way it's been summarized here, it, it looks to me like you've given us like a, a nice broad swath um, of, of groups. <laughs> I just wanted to bring attention to someone uh, noted that th this individual, Ludmilla, has been mentioned in two groups. Yeah, and Andra and I talked about her for the uh, energy group, but actually thought she'd probably make more sense in the building group, uh, but we can discuss that. Yeah, she probably makes more sense in the building group would be my Yeah, I think so. Take. Yeah. I'm also... Um, just from buildings, I mean, um, at UMass, um, I think probably a, a better target than sort of sustainability. Uh, people there are the um, the BCT, the Building Construction Technology Group. Um, uh, they have a lot uh, to offer in terms of building um, design, building efficiency, building materials. In the case of Peggy Clouston, for example, who, who um, really works on um, um, uh, CLT, um, what does that stand for? Cons uh, cross laminated timber. Um, Can you say what, what should go in this again? Well, I, I'm thinking there may be instead of uh, the sustainability, which is not really defined, is more UMass uh, uh, BCT, which is building construction technology. So we have Pe Peggy and Ben from BCT. I wonder if just eliminating Ezra Small from the list. Yeah, yeah, I would, I, I think either Peggy or Ben would be more useful to the group. Um, yeah, oh yeah, Peggy Klaus in there as well, uh, underneath, yeah, okay. I remember that Ben had come up um, in some of the background documents because he runs the Clean Energy Corps at UMass, which does um, free audits, and I think that's where that came from. Yep. I so are we taking Ezra off? Um, I think I think that's a good move. Yeah. yeah. Besides, he's he's very very busy. What, what what do you mean? Ezra knows all about the parking lots. He could uh, be useful in the energy group. It could be more so the energy side. I mean, I'm not sure. Also, if we're specifically trying to target. Amherst res resident people as well. Um, Ezra's not. Peggy, I think, is. Uh, ben Ben's not, but um, it might be fine. So do we want Peggy up with that building's construction technology, or do we want to keep? It, it's the same 
thing that you have. Okay, so maybe we just take this UMass building construction tech off and leave the UMass science screen with the Peggy in. I'm just, yeah. one, sorry, go ahead. I think so. Um, I have a comment about the buildings. I, as I look at the whole list, um, you know, I, I feel like there needs to be a balance of, I, I, I know that we have four community leaders, um, but it seems like we need, I don't see anyone who is like a climate activist in there, except maybe Chris Riddle. And so I, it seems too weighted toward academics and business. Um, and so I guess I am trying to think of maybe we should have someone again from the Hitchcock Center because they were involved in the zero net energy um, push. So there might, we might be able to get a person there. Um, Chris was on the zero net energy task force. I don't know, should we have another person from zero net energy task force on there? Um, because that is... Lydia is on there. Oh, Lydia. And okay. Lydia also oh, I didn't see her down there. Lydia also per, oh, was a part of the MVP process, as was Chris. Right. So one, I guess I, I just, if it's weighted too heavily one way or the other, I would consider potentially taking people off the list rather than adding more people to the list. I think I'm, am I counting right that there's 20 right now? Yeah. So I, I'm just not sure how to manage 20 people in this process, so. A piece of the community leader piece is that it's possible that not all of the community leaders will be able to participate. So there's a little bit of buffering there. Gotcha. You're not, you're not gonna get all of these people. On, on the other hand, I really do think that that community leader piece is extremely important in buildings and especially with like housing. Um, I don't know exactly how to think about this either, but I really think it would be great to have people that represent um, the affordable housing developments um, and places where a lot of people live that might not be involved at all, but, but you know, could really speak to issues around utility bills, issues around uh, efficiency upgrades, could really who have just super relevant experience to this stuff, you know, I mean, I, I, I know that there's a lot of people in Amherst that live in these places. Um, I don't, I, I don't know who these community, who the community leaders are, um, maybe some of them uh, are, are living in these places, but I think that would be really good. Um, I can try to find out how to, how to. Um, One lives in public housing, the other three live in apartment complexes. Okay, cool. How about, are there, um, um, to Ashwin's point, maybe is is uh, we have the Amherst Housing Authority, but are there any um, landlords uh, of these housing, be them public housing or or or, or private housing apartments, uh, where diverse community members live, landlords that that might be in a position to join us? I know that Caitlin's done some connecting with the folks at South Point, um, so I wonder if it that would be a question we could ask Caitlin to see if there's any openness. Um, that's one of the big complexes, but I think that's a good question. And do we know if the, um, is there any organization of, um, Is there any rental renter organization or maybe even from the UMass students perspective, like a organization of student of student renters? Not that I'm aware of when I was reaching out to the um, Affordable Housing Trust, I was referred to some folks in Springfield and Holyoke. Um, but I wasn't given any connections here. I know that the GEO has you know, went through a lot with the closing of North Village. Um, and they are continuing to advocate for 
you know, the university is now making sort of contracts with some of the local apartment complexes to rehouse North Village residents. Mm -hmm. um, so possibly there's someone there. I'll make a note to reach out to Ezra. I don't think he's the right fit for this group, but um, he may know of some student. And we talked, Ashwin, you brought this up last time, which was a good point that we should have students represented where we can. Um, he may know some students that that are interested in in this. Um, I think a good organization to reach out to for that is um, Amherst Family Outreach. They um, have worked with, um, for instance, you know, the, the owners of some of the complexes in order to get space to have the homework club. Um, so they may have some ideas for us. And I forget her name, the social worker who runs it. It'd be great if she could be involved. UMass has an off-campus student services office, which I think helps students find places to live. It, it also interacts with landlords. Um, and I, I don't have a recent contact there, but I have a name and number from 2017, uh, but it's off-campus student life. Phone number is, anybody want to take the phone number down? Here we go. Um, 413-577-2187. And it seems like they, I get notices from them occasionally as um, I have a small house that I rent um, and I've listed with them before and I get notices about, you know, warnings before party weekends and a few things like that. So they do do some outreach to the landlords and to UMass students that live off campus. Okay, and um, in the interest of time, maybe we 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 move on from this group. Um, yeah, Jesse, I hear I hear you about not wanting to necessarily add people to the list, but um, I think we won't necessarily get everybody, and um, we may have to adjust as we get started. Like we may we may find holes as we as we start. Um, so. I would suggest asking um, Evan and Chris for their suggestions for increasing the diversity uh, in terms of the local businesses, like which one should you choose? They'll have ideas of what each of those might bring and you can choose that way. So just have one of them. Should we go down to the next one? So. Sorry, Andre and Dwayne, you guys are electricity, right? Yeah, I'm not sure why Oh, the landfill project. So not all of these are people. In fact, mostly they're not. Um, I think we'll want input from Stephanie's the one who oversees the Amherst Solar Landfill. She could fill us in who we need to bring in if we want to get information. I would take them off the list. Um, uh, I think we should talk about who at the DPW each group wants because they they also reappear um, and i'm really not sure myself who at dpw would be appropriate for energy would it be the person who procures um energy for the town i think that, that's um what it's it, not dpw 
Oh, no. Oh, oh yeah. So that would... Facilities. Uh, yeah, I don't think that doesn't really make that much sense to have DPW, I don't think, but maybe, I don't know. Um, well, it was somewhat, um, I think we understood our group was specifically electricity. Um, right. And then the, and, and the energy with regard to transportation and um, build um, heating uh, was more on the, well, the heating was more on the building side. Um, so that's where, um, I don't, we had sort of Cerner and Noonan here um, at the bottom of our list. I'm not sure if that belongs here. Um, they, I think, they, I think it, there's this overlap with the buildings because uh, I think we put them there because, um, well, they're oil, you know, they're primarily oil companies. Uh, so that's serving more buildings. Uh, but at the same time, they're both also into um, heat pumps and, and, and the supplier of, uh, electrification. So that's also buildings, but it's also electricity. So that's a, a, an unavoidable um, overlap. So I think we have to discuss that in terms of which group that st stakeholder group uh, sort of fits in. I think, I think it probably makes sense to look at both lists together right now and just make sure that we aren't between them excluding, excluding any key actors that we want to talk to. And then the other thing to do uh, is like if the buildings group is talking to residents of public housing, make sure to ask them about elect their electric bill, you know, make sure to ask them about electricity issues too, even though you're the buildings group, because uh, those people are only going to be meeting with one of the groups. And, you know, if they're meeting with buildings, make sure to ask about electricity. If they're meeting, if conversely, if someone is meeting with the electricity group, um, but they also are relevant for heating and gas, ask them about that too. Um, and let's, let's just uh, make sure we have everyone in some, have everyone somewhere and that we ask everyone everything relevant. Yeah, I think that goes to um, Ashwin, thank you for bringing that up, that all of the community leaders are really to be considered as speaking to all of the issues. And um, we really wanna encourage you to, if something is shared that doesn't fit within your sector, to really commit to saying that's a really important point and I am going to, you know, bring that to the appropriate sector group because there, there's, there's not someone from public housing on each sector group, you know, there's not, we, we need to hear from all of them on all of the subjects. So you can uh, delete the Cinda Jones line because she's gonna. Well, did we make that decision? I mean, truthfully, I think she's, um... She's really be in land use for um, uh, solar development and and sort of a, a perspective from her her perspective, which is obviously you know when it comes to solar development in Massachusetts is um, you know pretty uh, pretty visible. I, I think that will come out in the land use group. Just make sure that you talk with her about where you'd like her to build her solar. Yeah, totally. So we we do we do want to. That's, that's, that's a great example. Like we in the land use group will want to make sure to make a note of that. To the reason she's into solar development is because she's a landowner. Yeah. So um, diversified construction is one of the businesses also under. Yeah, that actually building. should be renamed because um, um, uh, really the solar developer there is Hyperion Systems, oh. um, which is sort of a a spin out, if you will, or a, a, a sub, I'm not sure if it's a subsidiary or what, but um, that Hyperion Systems is the solar company that works on small scale solar and agriculture. So um, we, we want to have Amherst people as much as possible. Definitely, we want a majority of the task group to be Amherst. I hope other task groups will also. So, um, but in some cases we might go as far as a neighboring community, you know, and consider Pelham <laughs> almost Amherst if, if we need to. So at PV squared, we would invite Karen Rivero, I would say. Um, yeah. So she's already there. Yeah, Darcy. Yeah, I think that um, 
you know, a major conversation is obviously going to be community choice aggregation. And so we want to make sure that there are enough people in this group who understand what it is. Um, yeah. No, contrary, I think we're going to need all of them to understand what it is. Oh, absolutely. But I, I think we need some, you know, some core people there. Well, you're going to be on it and Dwayne, obviously, and that's why we chose you to. But Karen, then she understands. Um, and that's Thank it, God right? Allison is informed at least. I, I, I mean, we were talking earlier today, Dwayne, and I you know, agree that this is the place where CCA will intersect with the ECAC work. And we haven't really found a comfortable way except to, you know, have enough of us knowing about it um, to integrate it. And I, I think that this will be where we integrate it into the Climate and Resilience Action Plan. Does that make sense to people? Yeah, that does. Um, I think though, um, so I do think it's important to have at least a few people on this committee that, or this task group that can speak and explain to it. But I mean, to have ownership of that within this whole task group, that's going to need to be the step, right? Actually being able to explain it and get people on board and understand how it impacts particularly members in our community, because I think that that's the part that can be confusing. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily that we need to pad this group with CCA people, but rather make sure the CCA people that we have in this group are going to be able to do the work to bring the rest of the group along, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so um, it would be great to have um, one of the students, um, it's um, Saho who has- Is there somebody else on the CCA group that you wanna have in, cause there's no one on this list, right? It just says CCA community member. Well, Dwayne and I are both in the CCA. Right, group. Sam Teitelman, it's possible that Sam Teitelman would be willing to oh, yeah. come too. Yeah, now that he's uh, in Amherst, yeah. He now lives in Amherst. Um, okay. um, no, he would go on the CCA community member. Yeah. T-I-T-E-L-M-A-N. Thank you, Gazit Chaya. So uh, who gets Dave Zomek if we can get him to come to anything? <laughs> He'll come. He'll come to one of them. <laughs> I mean, he, I think you had him on, on land use as well, right? Oh, did, oh, was it? Yeah, yeah, he might be more likely to come to that. Um, and same thing with Christine Brestrup, the planning director. Um, makes sense for her to um, go to the land use, right? Or maybe here. What do you think? I think it would be really good for us to have someone in the planning, you know, department and I think there's only two of them, isn't that right? It's not a big group. We can always ask, we can always reach out to Dave and say, these are the two yes. groups that we want someone to be represented and can you help us figure out who the right person is? Right, because it seems like there probably is somebody in facilities who um, is the person who's, who, um, might look at, you know, putting a solar canopy on the middle and high school parking lot and figure out all the engineering parts of it. Um, so maybe we need to rely on Stephanie to figure out where the staff people go in our task groups. 
Okay. Um, so, uh, John Fable is a co-housing resident. Um, we were also thinking of River Strong, um, who also knows CCA. I don't know how we're going to decide these things. Um, yeah, River. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think in situations where we have more than one person that could fill the same role, I think we just start with one, and if that person can't do it, we... I mean, offhand, I would think um, uh, River would probably be a better option than, than John Fable, I think, just in terms of providing useful insights. Um, but I think John would be great if, if River um, isn't able to do it. What's the last name? Strong. Strong. And just for the record, Fable is uh, B-E-L. And I'm not quite sure why co a co-housing resident was on the list. I you mentioned someone who had a project going that you thought was interesting, but you couldn't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they've also had experience with um, trying right. to do solar, um, and heat, and a lot of them have done heat pumps now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, it's not about having co-housing person. Yeah. You can just delete that one. I okay. <laughs> never did remember. And then did you say a specific specific high school student? Um, yeah, I think I would start with uh, Saho. When Can you spell that RC? for me? S-E-O hyphen H-O. What's her last name? Lynn? Lee, Lee, L-E-E. -E. Thanks. Um, Rudy would be amazing to have. You could go in a lot of different places. Love it if he'd join. Let's keep him here. <laughs> um, Molly uh, Gorin Watts is her last name. Uh, where, where does that one go? She's the PVC, PC person, but I don't know what her specialty is. I don't think it's energy. So she just lives in Amherst and works at PVPC. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, this Molly Gorn was. Yeah, got it. Uh, I, I think uh, she's. Um, yeah, I forget her exact title. UMass Battery Project. That was just an idea. Dwayne. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if um, um, who, I mean, the, the person who sort of directs facilities would be the contact person, but I'm not sure if he'd be, I don't know where he lives. I don't know uh, to what extent he'd be able to sp spend the time with us. Um, um, I mean, to some extent, I feel pretty comfortable talking about that project. Um, and we can always bring people in. Yeah. It's not like we can't have anybody else come. So take that um, one off. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited about having someone from the fire department. So I hope we can get somebody. Um, and Don Allison um, has a strong interest in renewables. He's actually a lawyer for one of the um, big developers in town. Yep. And, and is um, um, certainly familiar with the CCA. Yes, that's right. So then the idea of having um, Cerner or Noonan was that they're, they're both, um, you know, oil delivery. Um, but also thinking about diversifying, um, which is something that we need everyone to be thinking about. So I do like the idea of having one of them. 
I think I don't know about Noonan, but I know Cerner has diversified. Um, I'm sure they're eager to serve as much as the market and heat pumps as they can they can get. Yeah. Um, so uh, it would be, I think, really helpful to have them to, again, either in the buildings or, or us, but um, to really hear about, you know, from a business perspective, how, what, what have been the challenges um, uh, and prospects for, for heat pumps as they see it right now um, in the community. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we could put one in each. The, um, yeah, Noonan has also, you know, they definitely are, are un installing heat pumps. My, my heat pump is from Noonan and hot water heaters. Do you guys have a preference? Who goes in which one? We'll go with Cerner because Dwayne uses their services. <laughs> <laughs> well, only because my wife is a birder and knows Scott Cerner, who's a big birder. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you mentioned today, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Baker? Oh, Aaron Baker. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want a, another sort of academic uh, uh, thinker, very, very, um, uh, very familiar with energy, energy markets, um, very engaged in sort of equity, uh, equity lens in some of this. Um, and she's a professor in engineering at UMass. She, she lives in town as well. Sounds good. Yep. Sorry, that's not working to paste that in, but I'll just write it in. It was, we put uh, noon know. in here, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And then that last name that you just said. Yeah, was uh, Aaron, E-R-E-E-R-I-N. A baker. Um, and she's from UMass. And I just wanna do a little time check for everyone because yes. Ashwin and I have a few more things to um, get to. Yeah, can we can we move on to transportation yep. and spend a few minutes on that before making sure that we have a little a few minutes to also get to our kind of next steps. So this is Darcy and and I um, we went over it together last week. Um, ours is a little challenging because we have a sort of a couple different, particularly transportation and waste and health and communications kind of all lumped into one. So we have a large list um, and there was already some edits, right? That uh, Darcy, that you added that we can make sure that we don't have to, I don't think we need to add right this second, but Gazikai can add based on your email. Right. Um... John Root uh, said that he wasn't going to be participating, so we can take him off. Um, and Zero Waste Amherst um, is uh, going to be Brenda Davies, not Christina Platt. And um, the Hitchcock Center, Jessica Schultz. She's the waste person. Um, and we had said wheelhouse, wheelhouse catering or Cushman. I think she has a C in there, S C H. Um, Atkins is actually one of the drivers from the um, sustainability festival to or not the sustainability, the taste of Amherst to have that be waste free. Mm. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Who um, was that? Atkins. Um, you can ask Stephanie about that. She knows more. Right. And we have Amherst Cinema there because they're spearheading the, the, the green block of. The, of Amherst Cinema to Amherst Coffee. Um, and we were going to separate PVPC and PVTA, so we have someone from each. Um, you know, Darcy, I made all those changes, so they must be on the 
maybe they didn't make it onto this Excel, but I did go through your email very carefully oh. and made all those changes. So my apologies. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So it's somewhere. Um, and I think we added a few, but I can't remember what they are. Um, we added some more to transportation because that is, um, yeah. So if, if they're on some other list, then we can. <laughs> yeah, my apologies. Yeah, maybe just let, if there's anybody that has a quick thought on someone else or some other group that we should add to this. Um, you know, I think Casey Taylor in particular, Darcy is a member of your district who is disabled and uses public transportation. Um, but we did feel like we were maybe missing. You had mentioned a writer advocate. Riber app, yeah. Um, and we, we think that some of our public health groups would also serve in that role. And similarly, we're hoping that some of our, like Am Amherst Cinema, for example, you know, and Cushman, and like they should all have thoughts on transportation as well. Um, so, and we Darcy, thought Casey Taylor, I've not been able to get in touch with. Um, so if you have any resources for getting in touch with Casey and Angela doesn't have any luck. Well, I, I, I asked her and she said that she was, she really is very excited about doing it. Yeah. It's uh, just that the, the email we have is not working. So if you have any oh. way to get in touch, then, um, make sure and let me know. So she, okay. I do have an email, but, um, but her, yeah. Maybe we can talk later. Okay. Um, and we also talked about getting uh, someone from the town uh, who would be involved in, you know, setting up EV infrastructure. Um, so we could, we could uh, you know, have discussions about chargers and where they are and where they need to be, et cetera. Uh, can't remember what else, but I, I we, does he, I has it on a list. Yeah, let me just, I'll go back to your email and double check that you've mentioned everything. Could, I don't know if this is the right place. I know we're running short on time. I'm wondering if I could make a, a small fussy formatting request, mm -hmm. which would be to, I'm noticing that the, to have the names, the, 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 the individuals' names all be in one column and the organization's names all be in a second column. Sure. I think that's, that just helped my brain uh, <laughs> see it see a little better. Yeah. yeah, I actually like the way you, you organized it also, Jesse, according to, to businesses, um, you know, academics. And at this so point, that's... you each could make your own you know, organized list for your sector too. Um, if there's a particular way that I'm happy to, you know, adjust to anybody's, but um, you could do that as well. Um, and we know that Darcy, Jesse's brain is where it's at. Darcy, it looks like you also were wondering about mothers out front. Right, yes. I just, you know, I, I found that, I found that mothers out front was, was lacking from the overall list um, um, yeah. and, that it they could fit in in a lot of different places uh but if we want them to fit in with their mother hats on they might be in public health um and then it looks like you had um veronica blanchard right for um for waste yep she's the regional um recycling coordinator type person. Yeah, I don't um, know. I don't, yeah, I don't know if she's, yeah, I guess so. Does she live in there? And then you asked about if the schools have a climate position. Right. And provide someone from the schools. Yeah, and I, I don't know whether, I think we probably, if it's either or, I think that we need somebody from DPW. Um, 
Veronica would be very helpful. Um, but I think Amy Rosecki is, is also needed. You're not going to have meetings where you cover all four topics at the same meeting, right? Well, you tell us how to do it, Andra. <laughs> I can't imagine. We couldn't figure out, uh, you know, we, Laura and I did discuss that we really don't know how this is going to happen. If we can't have breakout, Zoom breakout groups. Um, um. I mean, I'm sure that it'd be great to have everybody in the room every once in a while, but got some really specific and different things to talk about. Right. No, we did talk about like having a whole meeting for an hour and then, and then having a second meeting for the breakout groups because, you know, because we can't, I don't know how that would work with posting the meetings. <laughs> it would be a nightmare. Um, Yeah, and so I think we might wait and see how other groups get on with their first meeting and learn from that. I'm also hoping, and maybe it's an offline conversation between Darcy and myself and, and Jim and his team about innovative ways to, to facilitate um, some of this because I don't want the conversation to be dominated. Um, and we may do the first meeting one way and then do the next meeting another way. Um, yeah, we didn't even mention the fact that we also have green infrastructure on our list. Uh, well, which it's actually on land use and natural systems, which makes more sense. It is. Yeah, and I'm not sure that we yeah. have good represent good coverage of that. Um, but we can, I think we can revisit that because I feel like that might be a, a relevant person from the town type of conversation. Um, and yeah, we, we also have some uh, some consultant expertise uh, through yeah. niche engineering on that topic for the group, which should help. Yeah, for sure. Um, but in terms of outreach for what it will mean, what that expertise will mean for uh, community members and generating buy-in, um, which is the purpose of this process, we may still need to do some additional work. So we have two minutes left. Um, <laughs> Gatikaya, did you wanna? I don't think it's appropriate um, to do the whole next section in two minutes. What do you think, Ashwin? Um, yeah, I think, I think that might be a little challenging. Uh, so I think we should, um, I mean, I really think that the, yeah, I feel I feel like we can't really cover that in the time. What is the next section? Uh, so the next piece is uh, I was going to go a little bit through the community leaders. I think we're pretty set on that. Um, but then we were going to talk about how we're going to structure the sector group meetings and um, setting aside uh, a specific meeting time in advance of their first sector group. That would be an introduction that would involve racial justice and equity training for the committee and energy democracy training for the community leaders. Um, and that would provide um, some framing and some um, relationship work before getting into the actual goal setting work. Um, and I have, you know, more than two minutes of um, thoughts on that to share. And I think it would be just unfair to the way that we've put our thoughts and energy into it to present it in two minutes. So I'm not so sure think, what to do. Yeah, I think let's hold on that and, and add that to a next agenda item, be, next meeting, because I think we accomplished one of the things that we certainly needed to accomplish today, which was making sure we all looked at the stakeholder list um, I would encourage anyone, if they think of someone, or um, to speak soon. Um, and, you know, I think we need to, we're going to need to just play this all by ear, because I think Stephanie really needs to be involved, and we need to figure out um, 
what her availability is going to be. Um, so, so hopefully we can have some, some thoughts on that. My first email I got from her was that her father's health was starting to fail and she wasn't sure if this was going to be a few day process or a few month process. Then we got a kind of another email that seemed much more urgent. So, um, I think we just need to, to give her some time. Um, but in terms of what is technically required of the grant, we need to move forward and try to schedule at least one of the, uh, ideally more than one, but at least one of the task groups meetings towards the end of June and sort of, um, Gazikaya, to your point, maybe then work the timeline back to figure out when we would, we could schedule these other, um, sessions that you were speaking of and how that fits into our overall timeline. Um, so our thoughts were, were that it would be the initial meeting and that that's the meeting that would take place before the end of June. So just one meeting of everybody in all the task groups. It would be broken, I mean, uh, broken into, let me just share screen, uh, broken into a three hour chunk, one hour being committee members with a third party facilitator, a second hour being community leaders with a third party facilitator, and then a coming together, committing, envisioning um, hour that would also be facilitated. I guess I'd really like to move ahead with some scheduling and inviting um, whatever the agenda is for the first meeting, we need to actually schedule an invite with some notice or else can't expect people to come. Yeah, I would also request that, um, that we, whatever proposals are being made for the structure and so on, that we get them in advance of the meeting. Like I would have liked to have seen um, of the proposals before them, you know, to have it in the packet for the meeting today. Although I know there was issues with Stephanie. And if you have a proposal about the structure coming up, if it's our, if we already have it, could we just send it out, you know, ASAP so that we could look at it? Um, because that's, you know, we, we need to see it. Okay, so we need to, to end this call, but um, let's plan on building, making that. So Laura, I had emailed it to you before the meeting, um, just right before the meeting. Yeah. And it's a part um, of that, it's part of that packet. There's a, a breakdown of the schedule. Okay, um, so I can share that out with the group. Um, and then I'll be in touch about the agenda for the next meeting and next steps um, as soon as I can. So we can't wait. We can't wait till the next meeting to schedule the first meeting and still have it happen in June. Yeah. So I need to speak offline with Stephanie and Gazikaya and figure out. It sounds like we've already reached out to some community members. And some we haven't, right? Is that the sense I'm getting? They, I've, I've communicated with the majority. And okay. there are a but also, like, other other committee members have have also communicated with potential participants as well. Correct. Yeah. So Darcy has yeah. been in communication with Darcy. Yeah. I haven't connected directly with Casey. Um, there, uh, there is someone who Ashwin added to the list. I don't know if Ashwin, you've spoken with, was it Julia? Yeah, no, not yet. Okay. Um, and then everybody else I've spoken with. And there are some who um, just don't know what life is gonna look like tomorrow. And so are interested and are not able to, um, I, I, I wasn't even able to, I, you know, I told them, you're not being formally invited. Would you be interested? And then I've brought the, the list to you all. So that's where that is. Um, and I can just um, show you all. Let me just scroll down and you can just see the layout. Can I say, um, if, um, if 
we're going to do an invite between meetings, schedule a meeting, I, I don't see why each task group should do their own invitation. It should just be standardized. Yeah, I have a community leader invitation to offer you all that Ashwin and I worked at. Um, like I said, we had we had quite a, another chunk of information to share, and I'm sorry that we didn't get to it. This is the, the schedule, and then I can scroll up to the invitation if you like, and it's something that um, we can send out. And um, the recommendation would be that there will be one invitation that can be used that would be more formal um, for town staff and other stakeholders and that there's one invitation that has been um, specifically adjusted given the feedback we got um, from some of the committee members and just in light of being more um, inclusive. So I have that to offer as well. Um, Great. So I think we need to figure out a way to move forward with scheduling the first meeting before our next meeting. That's what I'm hearing from you, Andra. Yeah. Um, and I would agree with that. And so I think, you know, let's figure out how to do that. I don't think it's individual, individual task groups inviting sending out individual invitations. I don't think that's on the table. Laura, another thing to just offer um, with respect to this uh, initial meeting that Gazikaya has described is that it's going to be committee members and community leaders once we have made a final decision on which community leaders are going to be um, invited. And it sounds like all of them are going to be invited and we'll just hope that we can get as many folks as we can. Um, but given that that's the case, scheduling for that particular um, first meeting might be a little bit less complex and we could try to nail that down um, very soon. Um, basically once Gazikaya is able to um, formally invite the community leaders and we get a response there. Okay. Yeah, I think once you guys pick a date, we can just tell them what the date is and we can have the first meeting and you know maybe we'll get feedback oh 10 out of 14 can't come and then i'll, I'll let you know um so why doesn't this group send any scheduling conflicts for the last two weeks of june through to me um and you can cc Gazikaya, if you have if you have their email address, or if not, I will coordinate. Does that sound Gazikaya good? At gmail .com. What, um, <laughs> are we talking about an evening? I mean, just in terms of looking at our calendars, are we talking about an evening um, meeting or during the day? Evening would probably be preferable yeah. for the schedules that I'm aware of. Yeah, and, and for mine as well. So um, just in terms of sharing our conflicts, um, just focus on, on uh, when we might be conflicted in the evenings. The weekends as well. And weekends. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's an action item for the group. And then we'll be back in touch on other things as soon as we can. Does that sound good? And sorry, just for the minutes, that's for the cover base the last two weeks in June in terms of sharing the conflicts with you? That's my, my sense. I think we have to have our next committee meeting before we have the, this meeting. And so our next committee meeting is the 17th. So anytime after the 17th. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Jesse, did you have a point? Just want to offer up a ton of gratitude for all the thinking and work that went into today and going late and I just, Thank you. Yeah. Great. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank Talk you. Thank you. All right. Thank you.